So Neo CEO just went to Harvard. Uh, he has a couple of pictures of him at Harvard. No, he's not going back to school to learn how to become a CEO. No, no, no. He's there to give a talk, a presentation uh, about China, about uh, new energy vehicles, all that kind of good stuff. I got a very good clip for you guys, but also some of the very important things that he said. He really wanted to show that Tesla had a lot of success here in China. Uh, they sold a lot of cars, a lot of cars here in China with a gigafactory in Shanghai. And China has become a very important part for Tesla. And Tesla has really helped China's EV companies, automobile companies, become more successful. And the competition really helped them move forward. And uh, a lot of these competitors, he sees them as sort of competitive teammates. They're all trying to become better, but it's not vile they, they don't want to be vile competition where you're bad mouthing each other like some of the other guys do but he's more taking the friendly approach that we should all cooperate work together and build a better future build better vehicles build better products together and even partner up with these uh, swap stations and charging etc so he sees them more as a teammate uh, we're trying to make everything better but of course, a big part of this speech was also to aim at the fact that, you know, it's really double standard, right? Uh, how come America is allowed to sell cars in China, right, with Tesla, but Tes China is not allowed to sell cars in America? What's going on with that? How come uh, American phone companies, Apple, is allowed to sell in China with no sort of restriction or whatsoever, but Chinese phone manufacturers are pretty much not allowed to sell in the U.S. with these like Huawei bands and everything. But he's not exactly saying that, but he was hinting towards this. He was hinting towards this, that this is a problem. Like we should see more globalization instead of, you know, splitting up. He also shared his backstory, his how he grew up, how his, the first uh, s song that he ever heard was the song... Um, we are the world. Yeah, it's a very fantastic listen. Audio is kind of muff muffled, so hang in there. But here it is. Roll the clip. The song was made in 1985, when I was just 11 years old. Living in a small mountain village of a central China. After school, I had to do all kinds of fun work before having time to finish my homework under an oil lamp. As a happy and a naughty boy, I had many ideas for the future. Since my village just got its first paved road that year, and the electricity was not even available until several years later, I certainly didn't expect that one day I would start up an EV company. As a reward for my hard work, my father gave me a radio as a New Year's gift. That radio sparked my curiosity and my imagination. When it's getting dark, I always get into the mountains, imagining of exploring beyond the mountains. Then, I made it to keep me in person. Then, I heard the sound very the world for the first time. That powerful sound has inspired many people of my generation. China is the largest automotive market and also the most open one. As a young startup, we have to compete with all international giants. We have to compete with the talent of well established domestic automakers. We have to compete with the talent of outstanding startups. Competition will lead to greater investment. Lots of time to break even. Less margin for mistakes. 
and the lower chances of success. Of course, we know that. However, we do not expect China to adapt policies to protect domestic players because we also see the other side of the coin where openness will ultimately benefit industries and the sustainability and make the best companies even better. Last month, the penetration rate of new energy vehicles among new car sales reached 41%. And that number was only 10.6% three years ago. And open market has been essential to the rapid growth of EV adoption in China. Good products, regardless of their brand or region, are all welcome in China. Tesla has a big factory in Shanghai. And in the last three years, it sold to more than 1.36 million cars in China. Model Y was the fastest selling mode last year. The Shanghai factory and the Chinese market are very important to Tesla's success. In the meantime, Tesla's presence has influenced consumers, boosted infant penetration, and even energized the automotive industry in China. Neo and other car companies are competitors, but in coming to climate change, we are actually competing teammates or in Chinese, Jing <coughs> Zhengui. I learned this term from my son. Once I was on the call, talking about the news competitors, and my eldest son cutting and said, Dad, competing teammates is something right. But to be honest, it was only five or six. I couldn't tell if he was so smart to see the essence of the competition, or just confused by the similar pronunciation of the big show or big you in Chinese as a father, I hope he's a former. I can really relate to the theme today. Yin qi ni ni, qiu qi yu shen. Seeking resonance and the happy friendship. That was the pursuit of the ancient Chinese. Today, we must admit that the world is more divided than 10 years ago. But, and it becomes more and more difficult to bridge differences. However, we can make choices and take actions to build connections, improve communication, and foster understanding. The aspiration of the poetry written 2,600 years ago, the dedication of the artist 39 years ago, and the values of today's forum, they all bring us to a common sense that is Cooperation is always a better option. Thank you.